بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد So tonight's maxim is قاعدة الغرر not ضررها ضرر is something ضرر is hurting or, or, or loss but غرر it means deceit or deception or defrauding when someone is being cheated cheated upon or tricked and it applies mostly to business transactions mostly business transactions however it can apply to to marriage too marriage contract, other contracts. So mostly applies to mu'amalat. Not ibadat, but mu'amalat. And the one, the one who does the deception, commits deception and defraud, is called al-ghar. Al-ghar, of course, in Arabic, ghar means the cave. But here it has different. Al-ghar. And the one who is deceived, the victim is called al-maghroor. Maghroor, not arrogant, huh? Because maghroor could be an arrogant person. Maghroor. But here in this context, it is the one who fell victim to this type of cheating and deception. Now, sometimes when you want to buy something in the market, you can figure out the price of that commodity, of that object. Let's say you, you want to buy a house. Nowadays, you can figure out the approximate value of this house. You go to the certain websites, you put the zip code, you put the, the square, whatever, the footage they call it, huh? and the year that it was built, and it gives you, you know, roughly the rough price. So when you buy a house, you are aware you have an estimation of the price of the house. You are aware. So if you buy it when you are aware of the price and you still buy it overpriced, then this is not deception. Then this maxim does not apply because you know the price. You know the price of this house is roughly $500,000 in the market and you are buying it for five fifty. dollars So you are aware. So once the person who purchases this commod commodity, this a property, aware of the price, and he is also aware that he's paying over the price, then that he cannot go back to the seller and tell him, listen, I've been cheated, you cheated me. He can't, because he's alim, not jahil. Also, the other part of it, is that if the seller, he knows what he's doing, his intention is not to cheat. He thought that the price is this. He didn't know. He thought that the price of this book, this book, because he loves the book, so this book must be in this country, in this community, it must be $20. He didn't know, no, no, the average price of this book is $5. So if he knows he's selling this commodity overpriced, then he's guilty. He has to pay compensation. But if he doesn't know, he's not doing that amden. He's not doing that deliberately. No, he thought that this is the price of it. So I offered it and someone, <laughs> is, he, he took it from me and he gave me the money. 
So it has to have two conditions. For this maxim to apply, it has to have two conditions. The, the jahl of the purchaser. He doesn't know. He doesn't know that he has been paying overpriced. Okay, he doesn't know. And also, the knowledge of the seller. The seller knows that he's paying it overpriced. Not that he doesn't know. Not that he doesn't know. So how many things we need here, Dr. Ali, for this? Two things. Two things. One of them is what? So the buyer doesn't know the average price. Yeah, he doesn't know the average price. Right. And, the, and also, the, 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 the seller also does not know that he's, he's not doing that deliberately. He's not doing that. So, Maulana, if there is sellers that, even if it's overpriced, they know they will be able to sell it. Yeah. Because there is a yeah. situation where yeah. people are willing to buy this. Yeah. Even if it's more expensive. Yes. But how about, how about the, the buyer? The buyer knows that this is overpriced, he knows, or he doesn't know. May or may not. If he doesn't know, then this one applies. But if he knows that the, the price of this commodity is $5, and he knows he's paying way overpriced because he needs it, it's f something important for him. Sometimes the place is different, the location is different. <clears throat> I remember I went to New York, they sell this. In the street, the vendors, most, mostly Egyptian vendors in Manhattan, for $1. In your hotel room, it's $7. Yeah. Actually, it's bigger than this. So I know I am aware that downstairs there, it's $1. But here in my room, it's $7. I am aware of that. Okay? So if, if the buyer is aware, then he has no right to claim compensation. But if he's unaware, he's been misled. Okay, he has been misled, then he has the right to go back to the seller. Question, question said, so the, is there maybe a third condition in this too that they have? Which is what? Which would be that the person has to come, so, so the example that Hajj Nadim said, so let's say, let's say you put the book at $20. You know, you know that the book should be priced at $5. But you priced it at 20 and someone came and they paid 20 and they were let's assume they were ignorant they didn't know mm. but they they don't complain they don't ever come back later and don't complain Would that this is still fine? no okay so this is in case of conflict this is in yeah. case okay. of dispute uh -huh. okay. case of dispute in case he finds out that it was overpriced and now he comes back and he asks for for a refund or restitution or whatever, compensation. But if he just takes it and he goes, then for his his loss, you know. This is in case of dispute. So sorry, if the buyer doesn't know the price and the seller, suppose the seller doesn't know the price either, then what happens? The seller doesn't know that this is $5. The seller sells it for 20 the buyer buys it for 20 Yeah. They're both dry. Both Jahil. In this case, in this case, because he did not, the seller did not do it with intention of deceiving the customer, the buyer. He didn't do it. He didn't know. He did not want to take advantage of the customer. He thought that the price is this, same price. So it might not apply. It might not apply because his... In, but how do we know exactly that, you know, his intention was good? How do we know? If we prove that he was innocent, his intention was not to deceive, then the deception does not, does not apply. Okay? Now, in this maxim, there are also there are two things that makes this maxim apply. One is the price. The dispute is over the price. The buyer says, this is way over a price. You deceived me. This is not the normal price. So this is one. Number two, it's not the price. It what comes with this purchase. There are some fine prints 
they put down, for instance, that let's say this is for only three weeks we pay the, we, 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 we sell this at this price. After three weeks, we will increase the price. Or, or there is some hidden cost there. The price is five hundred thousand dollars, but then there is let's say that let's say the the cost of the transfer or it it has whatever in the city you know sometimes some some of the property uh, uh, properties they have lien on them in the city so you have to go and pay money. He did not disclose that. There is some concealment, some concealment, hidden figures hidden cost the buyer did not know about the seller did not disclose this sometimes do you see how they put them in fine prints even in their ads when they sell a car they put you the figures very big but then this is with the deposit let's say of ten thousand dollars people do not read the deposit <laughs> they don't know they think it's only this payment three hundred dollars a month they don't know that there is a deposit you have to pay ten thousand dollars so that, in that case, if the buyer did not read or was unaware or did not sign, he did not sign underneath these fine prints, then again, because he didn't know about the, the conditions. Again, he has the right to ask for compensation because he has been cheated. This is gharar. Gharar, you didn't tell him exactly. You told him this house is $500,000. You did not say that this house owes the, the city, the tax, you know, IRS, whatever, $200,000. You didn't tell him. So this is deception too. This is deception, a concealment of some conditions. Also would lead into the application of this, this maxim. Now this, the madrak for this is a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-Maghroor, the, the victim, Al-Maghroor, the victim, yarji'u ila man gharrahu. Yarji'u goes back in claims ila man gharrahu. The one who deceived him. The one who deceived him. Deceived him. Why do we say this? يَرْجِعُ إِلَى مَنْ غَرَّهُ Why it doesn't say it goes, he goes back to, to the owner. To the owner. But he goes back to the seller or not necessarily seller, the one who led into this deception, the agent who works for the car company, the sales agent. So who paid? Ah, exactly. The ghar, the ghar. The ghar. It could be the owner of the property himself, the owner of the commodity. It could be his representative, not the owner, the representative, the agent, okay, who did this. The owner, his intention are good, but the agent who work in his shop, in his company, he did this. So then he has to pay the agent, not the original company. He cannot sue the original owner. He may sue the agent who led into this deception. So Dr. Ali, if someone comes to a restaurant and let's say he asked for certain type of meal, but he was served something else, maybe lower in a price, maybe, or not the same quality and the one who served him is this guy who works what they call him the guy who works in the restaurant waiter. the waiter 
okay, who served him this. And the guy did not like the food. He said, this is not the food I ordered. I ordered something else. Or this is not the quality I expected. I came to this place expecting the quality in my mind. So in this case, who does the, who compensate for that damage? The uh, one who made it. The one who made it or the waiter or the waitress or well, the owner? The uh -huh. waiter is the one that serves it, but if he orders it, the chef is responsible for preparing it. Whose fault is that? Whose fault is that? When the food, we have to find out. It could be the chef is doing his job. This, the <laughs> chef, <laughs> the chef takes orders, takes orders. Right. They give him orders. Right. So maybe the mistake is the waiter, waiter mistake, not, not the chef. Right, depending who it is. For instance, I mean, some places you can order a meal, like give me a number three. Mm. You know, so all number threes are always the same thing. Yeah, I mean, they should mm. be the same. So if the waiter tells the chef, give me a number three. Yeah. So it's on, then I'd say it's on the chef on that part. Mm -hmm. But if the waiter didn't take down the order correctly, I would say it's on the waiter. Exactly. So whoever does this transaction is responsible for the loss. Unlike here in America, the company has to pay for the damage that the agents do. Their company pays, not the agent himself. The agent is always, you know, innocent. Even if he does damage, his boss, the boss, the miskin, has to pay for that. It's like the, now I was reading today in the New York Times about Boeing Company. They have to pay billions of dollars in litigations for the victims, for the families of the victims of two air, two air disasters, millions of dollars they have to pay. Even if the pilot, it could be the pilot was not trained on this new software, but still the company, Boeing has to pay. Boeing has to pay, the manufacturer, they go after the manufacturer. Whereas in fact, they have to go after the muqassir, the one who caused this, not necessarily his company or his boss, it could be himself. Why should the boss pay for this? Okay. And then here, there is a story also. So it does not only apply, does not only apply to transactions, it does apply to marriage also. A funny story in the book. Of course, this story does not happen now, but it used to happen in the past. That someone, the hadith says someone, they asked, which imam, let me say, uh -huh. they asked uh, Imam al-Sadiq. A man saw a woman somewhere, so he liked her. She was beautiful when he saw her. He asked about her, they said she's the daughter of Fulan. He went to Fulan, her father. He said, I want to marry your daughter. So the father, whether deliberately or mistakenly or whatever, he gave him her sister who is not, you know, beautiful like. <laughs> she was not that much beautiful, less beautiful, let's say. And then after the marriage is being consummated, I don't know how he didn't check <laughs> that night. Nice. Probably it was dark. Probably. It was, maybe he saw her first time during the daylight, the second time when they gave it. <laughs> because at that time there were no dating. No dating. You see your wife the night of your wedding. I'm a good example of you. <laughs> You see her the night of your wedding. After the act is done and you know people eat walima, <laughs> last thing they take you to see your wife. <laughs> so, <laughs> either you embrace her or you run away. <laughs> so after after the marriage is consummated and then he has a baby now, she's pregnant. <laughs> 
Then he realizes, no, she's not the same one. He looks very good. <laughs> Starts examining, <laughs> checking her out. And then he finds out. So he goes to the father and the father admits. So here, what do we do here? This is dharar, of course. Gharar. This is deception. Deception. He saw something and they gave him something else. Does not match his expectations. So is this still in the warranty period? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Even after 10 years. <laughs> Doesn't end, you know. <laughs> so here the Imam says, yes, he has the right to go back and ask for compensation. Now, if he, if he loves her, he wants to stay with her, then he has, he, he would, you know, stay with her. But the father has to pay some sort of compensation. The father is guilty because it was his mistake. Now, if, you, if he wants to stay with her because she's his wife now, she's a pregnant, she has a baby, he can. But if not, this will be grounds for the annulment of the, of the marriage. Because the marriage, I, 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 I ordered, like Ali says, I placed an order and the delivery did not match the order. Didn't match the order. So I have the right not even to pay the, the, the dowry. Even after you eat the food. Even after you eat the food, <laughs> you know. So say the company because it, it was based on deception. There is another name for it in marriage. It's called Tedlis. Tedlis. They used to do this. Tedlis now does not work because there is dating. They check her out. They see her. They go out. In the past, they would allow him to see her one time. And during that one time, it could be very quick. So he doesn't check her out. Maybe she has a problem with her eyes. Maybe she doesn't have her. Maybe she has other problems. Okay. Other defects. Or he has other defects. Maybe him. Not just her. So he can cover it up. In one meeting, what do, we, what do you understand from that person in one meeting? In five minutes, what do you know? You know, not even if he's deaf, <laughs> you don't realize. So this is tedlis. Tedlis means deception in marriage. Is that compensation paid irrespective of him staying? So if he decides no, to no, stay. no. If he yes, if he decides to stay, and he says to the father, "Listen, I now she's my wife. I don't want to break her heart. You know, I want to stay with her. She's a pregnant, or even if she's not pregnant, I want her. No problem. Because at that time they will marry five, six, ten. So it doesn't matter, you know. <laughs> but you have to pay me." You have to pay me for not delivering what I asked for. So the father has to pay some sort of damage. What is it? I don't know. They have to agree upon that. But this, this one, Qa'idatul Gharar, applies in that case. Okay, what time is it? 8.10. Do we go to another one or leave it for next week, Dr. Ali? Do you want people to like you more or? <laughs> وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد